Welcome students to today's class, two to four year experience. Um, we're gonna be working on kind of a tough piece today. Um, your two year experiencers might feel a little bit uh, like this is over you, but um, for those that have been playing more in the four year range, this could be a challenge. So um, I don't think we have to go extremely far. It's a uh, Beethoven Sonata. So uh, there's a lot of really great Beethoven Sonatas out there. This is one of them. Um, so hopefully I can give you guys some good tips. There's actually a spot where we shift into uh, fifth position in the third line. So I think that would be a, a spot that you guys could definitely practice. And we have some uh, um, different slur patterns and different things that are really good to practice. Okay, so the first um, part of the piece, we have a triple stop. So uh, for those of you guys that have not done that before, that basically entails playing three notes in one bow stroke. Technically, you cannot play three all at once. Uh, a lot of people ask that question um, when you're learning violin. Uh, technically, you have to play two in the first part of the bow stroke, and then the uh, bottom two notes in the top half of the bow stroke. So basically, the first chord, you have third finger on the A string, second finger on the D, and first finger on the G. And right now I'm holding all those down at the same time, like that. So that's what you have to do to be able to achieve this. And make sure that the second finger is not touching the G string. Otherwise, it would make a really bad sound. So those notes are down, so there's no movement in my left hand. And what I'm going to do is in the bottom half of the, um, the chord, I, sorry, I said earlier to do the... Um, the bottom two notes in the top half, that's actually opposite. So it's the bottom two notes in the bottom half like this, like that. And then you kind of cross your bow over to play the um, F sharp and D. So it's, and you hold that for three beats. And basically the way that you do it with a long note like this is that you play the bottom two notes uh, rather quickly. And then you, the, the top two you hold for the dotted quarter uh, half note. So it would be like that. And you can do vibrato with it like that. All right. Um, raise your hand if that makes sense, if, we're, if you guys are able to do that triple stop at the beginning. Okay. So basically that is something that takes some practice. Um, Make sure you guys are paying attention to the right hand. A lot of times not getting the right sound, a lot of times is a pro there's a problem in the right hand. You might be grabbing too tight as you're doing that. So use the index finger to kind of get the bow over to the A string. Just as if you were to play a regular note, there's no difference in the right hand. But a lot of students will change what they do in the right hand to do something like that. So make sure you're not doing that. Otherwise, you'll get that sound. <laughs> okay. Um, the next part here, we go into third position. Make sure you play F sharp, not F natural. It's short. And then we actually restart the bow for another up bow. So both of these are up bows. Up bow again. Then down bow. Like that. And that's all in third position. So let's do uh, that whole part, those first three measures. like that. So that was all in third position. And then double down bow. And then, sorry, triple triple down bow. Like that. Now, what a lot of people do when they're doing like double down bows or double up bows is they kind of slam the bow in the strings, which you don't want to do. So you don't want to do we don't want to do that. We want to set the bow nicely on the strings. We don't have to lift the bow way off the strings to be able to do a double down bow. Just a little bit, like this. Just get it back to that starting point. Bent wrist, good technique to be able to set the bow nicely with no sound. Let's go ahead and do that. Just go set with no sound. Set with that.
third position. Make sure you're holding those for four beats, right? It's a good test of counting right there because that's uh, easily rushed. And at this point, you should still be at, say, in third position, as written in the piece. So this would be 4-3 right here. And then back to, thir back to first there. So it would be... Right there. And until it starts to go fast, I don't suggest doing... Um, 16 notes in a bow. <laughs> uh, I would say doing eight notes in a bow would be fine at this speed, especially. Eventually, if it's going faster. But for now, change bows. Change bows. Shift. like that okay and then right there I just shifted into fifth position so yeah uh, basically those slurs you know it's so important that you're doing just a really natural left hand and not changing anything in the right hand based on what the left hand is doing the bow should be going nice and smooth with a bent wrist and um, guiding the bow with the index and transitioning to be able to get a smooth slur um, the transition points where you're changing directions that's when you really have to be the most relaxed as you can be. Otherwise, you're going to get kind of a jerky slur. So if I do the last two measures of the second line, I'm trying to get my bow to be moving the same speed as I transition. So for those of you guys that are here right now, try to, I'll do it again. Watch how my bow is moving the same speed. that so what is tricky is that as you're crossing strings um, you're gonna want to maybe change a little bit of the bow speed so for example um, the third line right there you're crossing strings right so it's gonna take you guys having really good discipline to not um, change the bow speed as well as when you're shifting. So um, notice how I'm bending my wrist as I'm doing that, those slurs. If I was stiff in the wrist, it'd be more like... Right? Not bending. So that's uh, a cause of not as good a sound with those slurs. Okay, let's uh, maybe start from the beginning and go all the way until we stop um, in fifth position there. Good, and there's actually quite a few spots where you guys are um, having to kind of reach back to play a note. So, for example, here, circling in the music, uh, that's an example of kind of a reach back. Make sure when you're reaching back that you're not dipping the wrist back. You're just um, basically um, getting the finger to move back, not the wrist. Squeezing, I call it. So that's an example of, of a spot like that. There's actually like two or three of them. Um, 
you guys know what I'm talking about. And the, and the other thing with that is make sure it doesn't sound like a slide. So in the second line, don't make it sound. <laughs> We're not doing fiddle, right? It should be. So it should be. Not. See? Like that. Okay, good. Um, so, yeah, maybe let's go a little bit farther. So the third line where we stopped, um, we were we basically shifted into fifth position. Raise your hand if you guys have done fifth position. Right here. I do the Roman numeral five. So, yeah, this basically would be up there in fifth. It's a good fingering. So I'll just write out exactly which fingers you're placing down. But basically, fifth position is where your first finger is going, where your third finger normally goes in third position. So it's even higher yet if you've only done first and third positions. Looks like most of you guys have done fifth at some point. So I'm writing out all the fingerings, which I would do for a student that maybe is relatively new to the fifth position. And then once you do that, you go back to third first because obviously you can't play an A anywhere other than first but then shift to third like that and then and because I did the fourth finger and third here I would suggest doing the same thing here and third as well so that's actually a really good test of, of a good hand shifting up and down. If you're grabbing too tight with each note, playing those 16th notes, you're um, not going to get a nice smooth sound in the third position. You're going to get more or something, whereas you want right? Then you can get a nice vibrato. would be a, actually a good place to end at the end of the first uh, fourth line there okay I'm gonna take this whole thing maybe a little bit um, well no actually before I do that let's let's practice the fifth position section so the last three measures of the third line let's practice that a little bit right there and then we got like that and what I suggest is that you leave your first finger down all the way through that. So here's my first finger in fifth. Leave that down all the way because you actually end up hitting it at the first note of line four there. Let's practice that again. And what I would suggest maybe as far as the slurs, it might be kind of tricky. You could do all separate notes. Um, you could do two per bow uh, to kind of get into it. Or you could eventually do the bowing. I'm going to do four per bow. faster so that'd be a good practice spot okay um, let's take it from the beginning I'll kind of play it at a medium speed Two, three, four, one, two. 
It's like that. Okay, so I'd say that was maybe median speed. Uh, let's take it even a little bit faster. Ready, go. Like that. So that's the Beethoven Sonata Opus 12, number one. So yeah, I think um, this is a really good piece to practice. Maybe work on a D major two octave or even three octave scale with this. Um, I think Maz's etudes are really good for this level. Um, but yeah, it's got some good fifth position. It's got um, some good rhythm to practice, some good articulation. Um, so hopefully you guys can kind of heard how I played it, my style, um, doing some of the staccatos. I didn't really apply a, a lot of dynamics, so try to work on that. Um, there's definitely some spots where it's piano or forte. Um, but, yeah, I think it really takes having a good soft hand in some spots in here and um, working on a lot of things that uh, are important to practice, um, including just having good technique. So, great. Um, well, I'm going to take some questions from people that are here right now and um, – for those of you guys that are interested in this class, uh, we're doing them every Thursday nights at 8.30, um, two to four year experience class. Thanks so much for watching.